this will be a, a weird question. I may or may not cut it. We'll find out. Uh, so Isaiah Mustafa <laughs> was the Old Spice guy. Like he, he is the iconic Old Spice man. He must have smelled amazing, right? Like he must have smelled like, I don't know what Old Spice's formula is, but uh, cloves and <laughs> lavender or whatever else they put in there, right? He's fantastic. And he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's kind of unrecognizable in this uh, uh, to that. But he's such a generous um, guy. And I think I saw a, a Shakespeare role that somebody sent me that he, he had done. And it was just hypnotic to watch him. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking to Richard Gray, the director of Murder at Yellowstone City, which is coming to theaters digital and on demand on June 24, 2022. We're going to talk to him right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It's not a lot. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me. This is Richie Gray, the director of Murder at Yellowstone City, which is coming to theaters digital and on demand on June 24, 2022. It is an epic kind of Western film about murder, revenge, and kind of the, the search for truth. I love the cowboy hat. I think that this, and the, and the jean jacket, like I wish I had something like, truck <laughs> like that. That's amazing. I don't know if that was issued for the movie or if you just are, are a cowboy at heart, but thanks so much for joining me. Yes, I moved to Montana three years ago, and you know they talk about the Canadian tuxedo, but people do it four four layers here. Like you can quadruple the denim. There's not enough denim here that you can't wear. It's awesome. That's that sounds fantastic. I mean, you know, it's a harsh environment, right? So you need the denim to protect you and also <laughs> to look just awesome. <laughs> so it's fun, I guess right? yeah. That is a good segue for this film because I looked in your background. I didn't see a ton of Western films. Maybe I just missed them, but you know, I was wondering like what caused you to want to, you know, make this movie and maybe it was that move to Montana and that kind of change in perspective. I don't know. What, what was it about this movie that uh, caused you to want to make this? Growing up, uh, Westerns were always uh, my thing. My dad would take me to, to see Westerns. And, you know, when I was growing up, there were more fun Westerns like, you know, Silverado or The Quick and the Dead. Um, then, of course, Unforgiven kind of came out of nowhere and such a brilliant movie. But then when I was that going was to film school. That was also a fun Western too, right? Unforgiven, that comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Hackman just all getting all the laughs. Exactly. Um, so, um, so um, no, no. Um, and then when I was going to film school, you know, Deadwood, Deadwood came out and I was just re, it re got me into the genre. And then, you know, we had such thoughtful uh, Western, this is a strain Western called The Proposition um and jesse james and, and these type of movies that i can't believe how long ago they were now when you look them up it's a long time ago i think they're 15 years ago which blows my mind um and so i was always just keeping keeping on it but then i made a little film called robert the bruce which is a fable kind of nursery rhyme but it it features you know the king from braveheart and i filmed that half in montana and half in scotland and so that got me to Montana and I just fell in love with the place and having always wanted to make a Western um, executive producer and I, and my partner Carter um, is from Montana, used to run the drive-in theater here and was like, well, let's build the city for it here. And I'm like, sure. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, Cause we visited, you know, basically every Western town in North America. And they're either down in Santa Fe, if you want the, the desert look, mm -hmm. or they're up in Calgary, if you're looking at the Revenant, um, Legends of the Fall type, uh, Hell on Wheels look. And so now that Montana has a tax credit, we were able to take those films that usually go to Canada and actually film them where they were set in Wyoming or Montana. And so we built, you know, this incredible back lot, Western town, 28 buildings. Um, on 500 acres purpose built uh, for the film. And we're 30 minutes from Yellowstone and um, it used to be called where we built it, used to be called Yellowstone City in the 1860s. Mm -hmm. So it couldn't have been a more fortunate, like I would have to pinch myself when we're building these buildings. Like usually you get to go to a back lot, you know, a few weeks early, uh, not a few years. So it really helped us kind of make the best of the locations. Uh, two things. One, thank you for making me feel old by reminding me that uh, Just James came out 15 years ago because I, I love that movie too. <laughs> and, uh, second, I love this. You know, like most people during COVID, they're like, "Oh, I'm going to bake some bread," or like, "I'm going to, you know, learn a guitar." You're like, "I'm going to build a city." Like, oh, this, this, we'll, we'll construct a city to to make a film, and that that's amazing. 
Yeah, it, it was it was amazing. And Montana was a good place to be during the pandemic because there's nobody here. Um, so, <laughs> and so it's so it's easy to distance yourself. Um, it was great. And, and so I was wondering, like, did this film? I assume this film was made during the pandemic because, if, like you said, it's a perfect film to make. You know, you got plenty of space, you got plenty of social distancing, and uh, easy to, to isolate. So, you know, what was that process like? I mean, did you start building this? during the pandemic or did you start building and you're like, okay, well now we have this set, let's make a film anyways, cause we can do it safely. We started building before the pandemic and then had to have many, many shutdowns, but, but we had to close the film previously. We shot last May and finished almost a year ago. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but we'd previously tried to get up in November and just couldn't, you know, you couldn't get the bonding, you couldn't get the insurance and it would blow your budget. And so we were very much in pandemic, you know, the full, you know, daily testing three times a week, PCR, like always worried about the shutdown. Um, it, it was a different experience, um, made things really, really difficult. We learned, we learned a lot, um, but we learned to make decisions, which really helped this movie, like just really get to the guts of the story and make more certain decisions. Um, like we used to when we we're shooting film, yeah. actually, um, because your, your day gets limited because of the COVID of it all. Um, so it was it was kind of good to keep everybody like on the mission. Yeah, no, for sure. And you also have to deal with those horrible landlords who are like telling, "Hey, like we got we got to get moving in our town that we <laughs> created." <laughs> so, <laughs> it's um, really cool, and you know, just to be th thirty minutes from Yellowstone, so everything in the film is right there. Like that's the gulch behind you that's where the gold comes from and was where the gold came from um and you know there was every type of person from everywhere around the world uh there at that time uh in the 1880s so it was really great to tap into to history yeah and that the the, the setting was perfect like i like my favorite part you know was right at the start you see these just amazing visuals and it's just it's awe-inspiring like i can imagine why you wanted to build a town there and also probably why you wanted to move there because it is just uh it is an experience for someone who hasn't seen the outdoors in a very long time <laughs> so and you don't often get to see the a film set shot in the place where it's set mm -hmm. and we really like that as well and we we're out to hire so many montanans to work on the film um it was a really cool experience very cool. And speaking of some of the people that you hired, I love seeing uh, Isaiah Mustafa in this film, in this role, who's like a quiet, you know, mysterious character. How did you get him involved in this? Had you worked with him before? Or was this just, you know, you kind of put feelers out and just saw who wanted to make a Western? He's an amazing actor and he has such uh, presence. And he, he delivered such a stoic kind of performance. And you could go many ways with it you know you have a wrongfully arrested black man mm -hmm. and back then and just as it is now it is easy uh it was easier uh, for him to be guilty and let's not get into it yep. um but what was great about eric's writing is it's the women of the town firstly the native american uh Tanea Beatty plays violet running horse he's just not prepared to let it go unspoken that maybe he didn't do it and then he has to convince Anna Camp, the preacher's wife, to convince her husband that this is not right. And I just love the diverse nature. Amy Garcia, as you know, in the the, the script is written so well, and uh, actors like Isaiah shine. But from the leads down to the supporting roles, Eric gave them all great arcs. You know, John Owls, Richard Dreyfus, um, they all have a very strong reason um, to be there. Nat Wolf with, uh, playing Gabriel's son, they look so alike and they're so beautiful, <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the way they worked. And, you know, Thomas Jane is just such a Western fanatic as well. Um, and so uh, Scotty Thompson, Zach McGowan, I've worked with many times. So for every role, Eric really did a great job of giving them something to do mm -hmm. that was worthy. And I think that's how we're able to get such an awesome cast. Yeah, no, I loved the cast. I loved it. It seemed like there were a lot of people that you didn't really see in Westerns before, like Anna Camp and, and Nat Wolf and things like that. It was fun to see them in this role. And uh, I was wondering what brought them there. Maybe it was just like the chance to uh, see, see Yellowstone. I'm sure that was a big draw, but I'll also kind of play these kind of deeper characters in this, you know, beautiful setting. 
Yeah, I'd seen them all in a lot of different stuff. Um, and I've met a lot of different genres too. And I think most actors, well, almost all the actors that I've, <laughs> that I've um, worked with, they all want to make a Western. Whether they want to make two Westerns, it'll have to depend <laughs> on the experience. But it's like anybody, like everybody grows up and has some kind of want to ride a horse and visit Montana and go to Yellowstone or whatever. And I think when they found out, you know, we're actually filming in a town built for the movie 30 minutes from Yellowstone, it must have been a big pull. Yeah, for sure. And this will be a, a weird question. I may or may not cut it. We'll find out. Uh, so Isaiah Mustafa <laughs> was the Old Spice guy. Like he, he is the iconic Old Spice man. He must have smelled amazing, right? Like he must have smelled like, I don't know what Old Spice's formula is, but uh, cloves and <laughs> lavender or whatever else they put in there, right? He's fantastic. And he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's kind of unrecognizable in this uh, uh, to that. But he's such a generous um, guy. And I think I saw a, a Shakespeare role that somebody sent me that he, he had done. And it was just hypnotic to watch him uh, perform. Um, and I can't wait for people to see him in a leading role because there's a lot more to come for him. Yeah, for sure. It was definitely a shift. I really liked seeing, like, you know, you hear, I don't know, kind of how, like, people who grow up maybe as, like, child actors, they try to kind of change, you know, try to have a very different performance to kind of show their range. And this definitely did kind of highlight other aspects of his acting ability that you just don't normally see or that you may not associate with him. So that was really fun to see. Absolutely. Awesome. So I know we have limited time. I'm going to switch. I call it the lightning round. They're just very lightweight questions. That was a lightweight question to start, but you know, we'll have other lightweight <laughs> questions. I want to see how your experiences map to things that happened in this film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I will not be offended, but I try to keep them very answerable. The first question is, do you have any gold on you? <laughs> I have no gold on me right now. Just, just got to strike it rich, right? Get some dynamite, see what happens. <laughs> We've got the location for it. <laughs> yeah, actually, did, did you look, I mean, did you look for any gold? Like, was that like a fun activity that maybe you did on the weekends? Maybe that's in, how you in, in the, <laughs> Immigrant gold is a gold mine. So just directly behind the church was a, you know, an active gold mine back in the day with mines. And Zach McGowan, you know, explored them and he brings such energy to the film, which is why he's such the perfect way to, perfect first twist. Um, but yeah, we, 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 we explored and discovered uh, a lot of different mines in the area. There you go, everyone. That's how you can fund your indie film. You buy a gold mine <laughs> and just pray, right? <laughs> pray and use dynamite. That's it. That's it. Uh, if you struck it rich, would you return to your hometown or would you go far, far away? Um, I'm, I'm just in love with Montana. And so uh, whether I have money or not, um, this is the home for me and my family now. Uh, we go back to Australia all the time. Unfortunately, couldn't during the pandemic where, I, where I'm from. Melbourne was had one of the biggest lockdowns. In, in the world but I have my family coming here next week and we always go back for christmas um but right now my home is montana that's a from this film i think that's a great place to be uh, can, <laughs> can you ride a horse i can ride a horse Excellent. not very well it's like all actors <laughs> say they all actors say they can ride a horse and you don't find out um whether it's more a beach beach ride in uh fiji that they've done or whether they can ride a horse and i'm the same <laughs> you know what it still gets you on set right that's all that matters that's right uh, and, uh, can you shoot a gun i i can shoot a gun but again um <laughs> i'm not going to be uh trying out with any of these local montanans because they do it as a way of life here um so i can um but i don't <laughs> that's good to recognize your limitations uh, and the last question is what deodorant do you use Deodorant, I'd love to say Old Spice, but um, no, it's some natural thing that my wife buys that doesn't have aluminum in it. Mm. What do you guys say? Aluminum? Aluminum, yeah, aluminum. <laughs> I, I should be using, I, should be, I use Old Spice, but I, I should be using aluminum free probably, but uh, <laughs> like, that's a problem for future David, not current David. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the film is out on june 24 2022 in theaters digital and on demand you are out promoting this film getting the word out uh after people see this movie like what can they look for next from you are you gonna make another western you, you, you always said that you know everyone wants to make one western do you want to make two or is there some other project that you have bubbling up in your magical montana set we have another western surprisingly um <laughs> and we have another scottish epic there's a guy called james douglas it was the trio between William Wallace, James Douglas, um, and Robert Bruce, who Scott screw up 
idolizing. So we have a big film with James Douglas and another um, big, big Western. But you're about to see the Yellowstone Film Ranch a lot because after we shot um, as the first film, we shot back to back to back. So there's Nicolas Cage one coming and then another one coming. And then Mario Van Peoples is coming here to shoot a sequel to Posse, oh, wow. um, which is so long ago. Um, and so, so you're about to see that church a lot. Um, <laughs> and I am yeah, very so, excited that that was uh, the set was amazing. Like it was a beautiful setting and I can't wait to see, you know, how people like this film and also this in other future Western films. Cause it, you know, I've talked to a couple of Western directors and it's just like, Western is one of those genres that you don't really see much of, but it's consistently coming out. And it's always, you know, it seems like it's a constant interest for people. And they're coming back. I think, you know, Taylor Sheridan has done a lot to, to, to help that and to show that there is a real appetite for Westerns. Mm -hmm. What I love best about it is the history side of it. The fact that you can research and see what was happening in America post-Civil War is the best part of making Westerns to me. You can actually research, do so much research and find such amazing stories. Um, that's the best part. Yeah, for sure. They can always have some sort of crazy story out there because there was a lot that happened in, you know, the Wild West. I mean, that's why it was called the oh Wild my gosh. West. <laughs> that's right. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. This is Richie Gray, the director of Murder at Yellowstone City, which is coming to theaters digital and on demand on June 24, 2022. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, David. Great to meet you. Awesome. Pleasure meeting you too. Thank you so much. That was Richard Gray, the director of Murder at Yellowstone City, which is coming to theaters digital and on demand on June 24, 2022. It is an epic Western film about a small town, a murder, and the justice that may or may not happen. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.